Hey guys, Derek here. Welcome back to the channel. We are back to watch episode two of The Midnight Club. Uh, I really enjoyed episode one. It was a strong start to the series, I think. A lot more jump scares than I was expecting. I think they had that one scene of like 20 plus jump scares. But yeah, so far I'm liking it. The characters are all engaging so far. I don't think there's a character that I dislike at this moment. Um, so that's good. Uh, the, like the performances have all been solid. Um, and I'm really just looking forward to jumping into episode two. So before we do that, uh, if you end up enjoying my reaction, please leave a like on the video. Uh, that really does help go a long way in uh, my videos getting seen more. Um, if you're new here or you find yourself coming back often, hit subscribe and ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. Uh, especially if you want to see me react to the rest of Midnight Mass. This is not called Midnight Na Mass. This is the Midnight Club. <laughs> uh, Midnight Mass was another Mike Flanagan show that I watched on the channel. So if you're interested in that, peep that. Um, uh, and then if you are interested in seeing the full uncut version of this reaction, uh, that is linked in the description below. Uh, your support over there on Patreon would mean the world. Uh, but otherwise, let's jump into episode two of the Midnight Club. Ooh, this one's in pink. Do they just have that fireplace on? Like at all times? Sometimes I don't even know if I'm awake or asleep. They say it's the meds, but I don't know. That's not good. It's SAICT. Have you heard of it? I mean, they're doing trials now. A nurse named Reen Case created it, and then she gives it to her patients. What does it do? In fact, she, she actually named it after herself. Well, that's pretty pretentious. Give it. Oh, <laughs> it's yours? So, sorry, it was, it was just tucked away in there. It's got sentimental value. Don't want to say the wrong prayer, play the wrong music, accidentally cremate someone. It's about lawsuits. That would be it's rough. It's about agency. Uh, it's, it's about lawsuits. <laughs> Do you keep patient files? Six Your months. Your information is safe and private, if that's what you're after. It's not. Oh, she wants some old patient files. Her name is Julia Jane. I don't recall. Really? Liar. I think they were called the Paragon. <laughs> She's just asking all the wrong questions for this lady. Before my time, I expect. She was the leader of that group. So, if there's nothing else... She helped create it. I'm Freedom Jack, the man says. And my girl here, that's Poppy Corn. Who are you reading to? Tristan? Did you fall asleep? I'm awake. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Squeeze her hand for me. I got it. Okay. All right, Riley Flynn. Hopefully you're a good dude. Years. Hello. PlayStation. Sony PlayStation. It's um the best. It's CD based. It's the best. NES, Genesis, Super Nintendo. And you think you can make it to the GameCube? It comes out in September. That's like eight months from now. But yeah, it's it's lame, I guess. Um, yeah, you definitely won't make it to the GameCube. Man, that's all. And I know there's stuff I should mourn more. I'm probably gonna lose a lot. My sight, my motor function, my memory, my life. So. But the PlayStation. And, and it makes me mad, and it sucks, and yeah. You asked, that's what came up. I feel like that's the exact type of thing I would say. <laughs> the PlayStation. I want to play it. Alonka, tell them about the tea. Oh, don't make fun of her. The tea. Please don't make fun of her right now. Tell them the part about the backward name. 
Oh, and the antioxidants. Dr. Stanton, I cannot believe that you never thought of antioxidants. You don't have to drink it. And you don't have to do this either. Yeah. She probably feels as though it's pretty insulting. Like, the any any random new thing. Like, she's already accepted the fact that she's going to die. Cupping. Colon cleansing turned out to be a load of shiatsu. Oxygen therapy, ozone therapy. And no lie, new girl. Urine therapy. It's when someone drinks, injects, or takes an enema of their own piss. Dang, that's gross. I seem to recall you came to Brightcliff towing a few unorthodox remedies with you as well. It's cool. I get it. I get it, Anya. Every person that comes here wants to try some new thing that they might think helps them. And she's seen enough people die. And nobody is as hurt as you are. And nobody's as angry as you are. And nobody is dying quite as hard as you are. yippee ki -yay, motherfucker. Die hard poster in the background. You win. Okay? yippee ki -yay. But I was just trying to get to know you because we're sharing this space whether you like it or not. So fuck me, I guess. Fuck me for just trying to get to know you. She doesn't want to become friends with you because if you die before her, that hurts because she doesn't want to grow close to someone that she thinks she's going to lose. Water. Drink the spring water. That'll surely help. Ayo, that, um, that almost certainly has some harmful bacterias in it. Hi there. Some, some gross water. He scared me. Sorry. You're... I don't often bump into too many people out here. Oh. What you doing? Beverly Keen, you self-righteous bitch. <laughs> I'm glad to meet you. I'm Shasta. Okay, that's a stupidly dumb name. Shasta's a beautiful name. Is that Greek? No, it's the... Sanskrit. <laughs> I was going to say it's the knockoff sugar. And the vortex. Well, that's something else entirely. The vortex? The fudge the does vortex? that mean? There's a vortex in the Sandman. It's been a long time since I met a patient. And you probably killed the last one, right? I don't trust you. Never trust that lady. <laughs> She played an okay person in Haunting of Hill House, but ever since then, she's the worst. <laughs> That's a uh, hourglass slash Black Widow. It's Natasha Romanov. Got a secret hiding spot here. They're making origami birds. Why are they doing that? I've got this before I die list. And my before I die list is a list of things that I want to do before I die. Mm. Hence the name. Uh, there's this ancient Japanese legend that promises anyone who folds a thousand origami cranes will be granted a wish by the gods. And I've always wanted to try it ever since I found out about it this morning from Natsuki. Another one is making it to my sister's wedding. Oh, that's so sweet. Also, there's hang gliding. Never gonna happen. Losing his virginity. Also never gonna happen. You never know. Always having sex while hang gliding into your sister's wedding. Thanks that, for having my back. That's an eventful... That's... Yeah, that's an eventful situation. <laughs> An attendance for me. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, oh shit, okay. are you okay? Oh. oh. It's okay. Spence, you're fine. Oh. Are you okay? It's okay, Spence. He's fine. Spence. It's okay. Can we get someone to the library for cleanup? Spence got cut. Does one of them have a blood thing? Not to him. Spence has AIDS. Oh. We don't do that face here. 
We don't do the poor Spence here. There's a lot of that, and worse out there, but not in here. Thing is, I go out for a burger in the real world, and I don't have to worry about someone telling me bone cancer is a punishment from God. Nobody's gonna tell Sandra she deserves lymphoma. But people out there Spence say that shit and little, worse to Spence. Worse. She can be really protective of us, just in terms of the reality of things. There's something else under it. Just she's masking some pain. I'm wearing these gloves and I'm using a sterilized needle so that I don't infect your cut. It's not the other way around. Two of the guys I work with in my other job, they caught it sharing needles. So? So it's not just a gay thing. No matter what some people out there might think. Armand. 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 And he is like... <laughs> You have got to see this movie. I promise you will thank me later. A little bit of bonding between them. What the frick? I don't appreciate that. <coughs> Oh, I definitely don't appreciate that. That was way more substantial. Girl, you should leave this room. There's a, there's a person in there. us with the spooky. The two Danas. Two Danas. Dana was perfect. Did she clone herself? The perfect girl. Wow. And she can dance. Yeah. But Dana didn't want to be perfect. Dana wanted to be like the other kids. Dana wanted to make out, smoke pot, drink herself stupid, and be normal. You prayed. So creepy. I answered. God? <laughs> oh no, honey. <laughs> it's the devil. The devil? For real. <laughs> First of all, hail Satan. Okay, not funny. <laughs> mm. Perfect Dana. That's what they expect, isn't it? But there's another Dana in there, looking out from behind your eyes. I see her. Separate. Separate the two of them. One you, who's student, daughter, dancer. Another you, for sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You can be inside both bodies at the same time. You can experience everything the other one is experiencing. Like a shadow clone in Naruto. Will it hurt? No. I don't hurt people. Never, in fact. I don't believe you. The devil's a liar, everyone knows. Don't shake her hand, no. <laughs> Sister, what were you thinking? That's creepy. Oh my God. This is wild. Can you feel what I'm feeling? It's like being, being in two places, places at once. That's probably mega disorienting. Shit. You know exactly what I'm going to say. What I'm going to say. Before you say it. It's like, it's like the episode Midnight. Summer, Summer before, before junior, junior start. start. Nikki Benella's behind, behind the bleachers. Doctor Who, the episode Midnight. She's just so distracted. <laughs> Trying to do homework. I love everything. How do you separate? Like, how do you close off that thought process? 
Because what if, what if you're trying to do homework and she's at a rave? <laughs> she's getting turned on while she's watching a movie with her parents. The night Dana lost her virginity in the same room as her parents was... Mm -hmm. Probably a contender. That was rather dramatic. Yep, that would be... Mega unfortunate. But the thing was... To Dana acid. too was starting to develop a bit of a habit. Oh, Heroin? Not good. Oh. 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 Ow. How did that break so easily? Two perspectives are blending. Everything's gonna be. A horrific blend of the two situations. Since Dana too had learned how to drown her out, she'd have to make herself a little bit louder. Oh! Jesus! Stop it! You're gonna kill yourself! Don't! Don't you? Don't do that! <laughs> Oh, 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 that's all the way through her hand. Oh, jeez. How are you not losing more blood? She's just gonna hurt you right back. You bitch! Yeah, we are a bitch. Her life is falling apart. And this is, this is what the devil wanted. The devil gets off on this anguish. If she Dana kills Dana. the other Dana, what happens the to her? The only way to put a stop to this, the only way to end this nightmare, was to kill Dana too. Her double that's, did too. That's the Harry Potter place. Are Dementors gonna come kill them? So she changed her name to Anya and went into hospice. <laughs> it's not a story. It's true. Why'd she cut her leg off? She called out for the devil many times throughout the last of her life. But the devil visited only in her dreams. Always the same. Why did she lose her leg? And every night she'd wake up wondering which Dana lived in her body, and which Dana lived in hell. And the one that lived, she felt it all. And every night she wondered who had it better. Ooh. So she still experiences both situations? But one of them's literally in hell? Picking locks, dude. Can I try something? Just turn the handle. It's probably not even locked. If this works, just know it's because she trusts us, which should make you feel really, really guilty about whatever you're gonna do next. <laughs> yep. Yep. Knew it wasn't locked. Freak is going on now. She's an old timiness. Stop it. <gasps> Don't touch that. There's something under it. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> 
you a... Are you a vampire? Sweet Jesus. I don't normally get scared at jump scares. Yeah, that's my thought. Is that the end? God dang it. Ah. Uh. <sighs> wow, that was another solid episode. Um, I don't know what it is about this show that is spooking me. <laughs> I'm usually not super susceptible to the spooks. I kind of get sarcastic when I watch uh, horror content and, uh, and it doesn't tend to scare me. Um, but this show, I don't know what it is. They just get, they're doing the spooks pretty good. Um, I liked this episode. It was nice to uh, learn a little bit more about some of the characters. We learned that Spence uh, has AIDS. Um, that was interesting, a little twist to learn about him. Mark seems like a good dude, the nurse, Mark. He seems like a like a champ uh, and very supportive of these people. I don't trust the main lady. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to. And I don't trust uh, Shasta because she's formerly Beverly Keen and this actress only plays bad people. <laughs> so who knows? Um, but I feel like we learned the most about Anya this episode, right? She's got this like hard exterior shell. And a lot of that comes down to, um, I don't know how to fully explain it. Like she cares deeply for the people that are there, right? But she's just seen so much death and pain that she's become hardened. And so like when Ilanka comes in, trying to talk about these new potential therapies that could work like it upsets her probably partly because she's like like give up like there's no getting out of what we're in essentially like she's annoyed that she's trying something new because every time she's seen one of these people try something they die anyway um and so that's probably pretty frustrating for her and it probably kind of feels slightly condescending uh, even though it's not intentionally condescending, right? Like, Ilanka isn't going into that thinking, like, oh, my my methods are better, right? That's not, that's not how she's going about it, but, like, inadvertently, that's how it might come off of, like, oh, like, all these other things that your dead friends tried weren't good, but my stuff might work, and so it's probably fairly upsetting. Um, and then the, the hard exterior shell right away definitely helps her to not become friends with the person right away because you know the more she becomes friends with these people and then they die um that's a lot of that's a lot of pain for her and she doesn't really want to go through that and she's being kind of a jerk <laughs> and it's just rough like that whole therapy scene where she's just like being a total butthole was tough to watch um I relate to Inesh, right? That's his name, Inesh. Um, Cause <laughs> the thing that annoyed him the most is that he might not be able to play the next PlayStation or the N64. <laughs> like that's the thing that he was mourning. Like it's, it's, it's an interesting way to think about, um, to think about mourning. Like the things that we will lose that aren't like these big substantial like life losing things like we're not losing a person or a pet or something like that like um it makes me think of the the episode of the sandman that i watched a couple weeks ago where um ha hob gadling is like he he can't die so he's just constantly living and and experiencing new things and and wonderful things and 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 he loves life even though he can't die and he's he's been through a lot of pain he still loves life because he has so many beautiful wonderful things to experience and look forward to um i talked a lot in that video about like how that inspired me because there's so much that i want to experience going forward that 
um, like if I lived to 700 or whatever, I could probably experience so many cool and moving movies or games or books or anything of the sort like that. Um, but knowing in this finite life that eventually I'm not going to be able to experience all those things. And, and like in Nash here, there's going to be something that's just right on the precipice of coming out that I'm, that I'm interested in and looking forward to, and I won't make it, um, to seeing it. And, and he wants to play the PlayStation and, and he's mourning the fact that he, he probably won't be able to get to play it. And it's, so I thought that was very interesting and, and kind of connected with him in that way. Um, but then I liked, I liked Anya's story about the two Danas. You could kind of tell right away the route that it was going to go where, you know, once, once the two Danas are separated, it's obviously not going to end in a, in a happy situation, especially when you're having that, um, but like when you're asking the devil <laughs> to, to grant you this wish, like the devil is not going to just give you what you want without some negative consequence. Um, and, and the devil gets off on that, that pain that you suffer after. Um, I liked, it was kind of an, inter an interesting twist that they weren't just like two, I mean, they were kind of two separate personalities, but they, they weren't fully t separate people. Like they both experienced everything that the other person was experiencing, like at the same time, it's like a, like a shadow clone in Naruto. <laughs> Although those are technically like in Naruto, they're like almost wholly separate individuals and they don't feel what their other person is experiencing until they come back together. But this they're experiencing at the same time, which is very interesting. Um, and it was curious to watch one descend into, you know, drug addiction and, and just pain and essentially like sabotaging her own life. Um, granted that was like the whole point of that personality. So she was kind of doing exactly what Dana wanted to experience in the first place. Um, but the fact that they couldn't, only one of them could really turn off that connection, right? The, the, the drug dealing Dana was the only one who, who, who could suppress that connection for the most part. The other one didn't have anything to suppress that. Um, and so it's kind of like a metaphor a little bit for Anya of these two dualities that are living inside her of like, who does she want to be? Um, and I just, I thought the story was really interesting. And now the, con like the conclusion of that story where one of them is dead technically and in, in hell. Um, and the other one is alive and they're experiencing like, at least from what I got is like, she's still experiencing what the other Dana is experiencing as well. But one of them is in hell. So she's just constantly in like half in hell for the rest of her life. Um, and that's just like, that's brutal, man. That's, that's crazy. Um, and then yeah, Ilanka does some detective work to learn more about Julia Jane. Uh, and we, we don't know two episodes in what the freaking deal with this house is, I learned that this house is completely fake. So like all the, the like this was mind blowing. I, I saw this on Twitter. All the uh, interior of like all these houses and, and castles and stuff that they've, that they've filmed in for Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, uh, Midnight Mass, uh, this like, well, Midnight Mass, I think they, they just built out all the exterior exterior buildings, but like Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, and then this show, all the exterior shots of the building, that's CGI. It's a fake building. Like it's not there, <laughs> which is wild. Um, and then they built the sets for the interior. And you know, that makes sense, whatever. Like building building sets is normal, but it, it blew my mind that the the outside the exterior shots of these buildings are fake like it's a it's a construction like it's not an actual physical building um like it's it's just a computer construct <laughs> which is which was wild uh, mike flanagan posted about that on twitter 
which is crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to this building. We don't know anything about this building um, other than that it's fake. And there's some weird sketchy stuff in the past with this creepy old lady that keeps either contacting Ilanka or is trying to kill her or something. Um, but there's spookiness happening in this hospice. And hopefully, eventually, we will learn a little bit more about it. But um, I don't know what else to say. This was a solid second episode. I liked it a lot. Uh, definitely let me know what you guys thought of the second episode down in the comments below. Are you enjoying the Midnight Club so far? Um, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you enjoyed my reaction, please leave a like on the video. It means a lot to me. It helps my channel out a ton. Uh, if you're new here, hit subscribe. Ring the bell so you're notified when I upload. Um, and then if you would be so kind, consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, I post full uncuts for everything I watch over there. Uh, and your support would mean the world. But other than that, thank you for watching. And I will catch you guys next time.